All right, but let's focus on all the Israeli election drama with tonight's opening panel. Joining me here in studio, Shai Franklin, a Middle East analyst and partner at Gotham Government Relations, and David Effiun, editor-in-chief at the Algemeine. Good to have you both with us. All right, Dobby, let's start with you. Gantz has rejected Netanyahu's offer. So what's your projection? What happens next here? Well, it seems actually that Prime Minister Netanyahu in some ways has been the victim of his own success here. Uh, he's presided over the last uh, decade over a period of really unprecedented security and stability and economic prosperity, which has allowed voters to start to think beyond the external security threats which traditionally influence Israeli politics and think about some internal issues. And that's really the core of the conflict that we have over here. It's a fight between the orthodox and the secular and their place in Israeli society, with Avigdor Lieberman put, taking a strong stand and saying, it's my, my way or the highway when it comes to issues of religious and secular, right. which creates a situation where basically neither bloc can actually form a government. Right. And, and you're saying it's because Netanyahu has excelled in maintaining a sense of security, keeping in mind that there haven't been the kind of terrorist attacks that Israel was plagued by in the early 2000s. There have been rockets coming in from Gaza and Hamas. But you're saying that because things are relatively OK on the security front, that's why Israelis are moving away from Netanyahu, at least did in this election? Well, it's not so much moving away from Netanyahu as focusing on internal affairs as opposed okay. to external affairs. And that's really what this whole debate is all about. And even if you look at the, the movement of votes between this election and the election in April, most of them have gone into either the religious or the secular right camps or those parties that are pushing either a religious or a secular agenda as opposed to those sharing differing views on security issues which traditionally have been at the forefront of so, Israeli so uh, electioneering. Arguably Netanyahu has made the gracious offer and probably what is the most reasonable way to get out of this mess that he will take the prime ministership first for the first two years allows him to have a graceful exit allows him to maintain some kind of continuity given the big geopolitical threats that Israel is facing, and then we'll hand over to Benny Gantz. But Benny Gantz is saying no. So what do you think Benny Gantz's move is here? Well, you know, I think it was a Churchill who said, you know, gracious, uh, magnanimous in victory, gracious in defeat, or something like that. Uh, Netanyahu is being gracious, but if you have a winner and a loser, Netanyahu is the loser. And even though he's the sitting prime minister, it really would be either Rivlin or, I would think, uh, Benny Gantz, who should initiate the idea of a unity coalition. And, and Gantz has made clear consistently that he will not have a unity coalition with Likud headed by Netanyahu. And, and it's, it's true there's this religious secular divide and, and other cross-cutting divides in Israeli society. But the so, Likud, so what the, happens next, Yoshai? Well, the, the, the Likud, Likud, Likud voters are standing by Netanyahu. Well, that's just it. I mean, for this to be resolved, someone has to break a campaign promise. And I stress that point again and again, because it's either Gantz breaking his promise to sit with Netanyahu, Likud as a whole breaking their promise to oust Netanyahu. Someone has to give somewhere. Well, we have Lieberman, of course. Well, he would have to break his promise to stand, at, if, if he joins the an ultra-Orthodox bloc, he'd have to break one of his promises regarding pushing back on them with the military conscription. He can, I, but I think he can, join the, uh, he can join the blue and white and uh, try to get a coalition that way. He's made clear that he has, he has supporters, people who voted for him, who would be so very comfortable with blue and white. So what would that coalition look like, So, so here, here, Here's the thing, actually. Lieberman has been described almost unanimously in the media as a kingmaker. The truth is, he's actually more of a king blocker. He only has the capacity to make one king. If he goes back on his promise, as you said, and joins Netanyahu, he'll make him king. But if he joins with Benny Gantz, they still don't have the 61 majority that they need to form a government unless they partner well, up with the, with, with, with the joint Arab list. And which has, won't do which that. Which has never, ever, ever sat in an Israeli government, in the history of Israeli politics. So the chances of that happening are probably smaller than the chances of, Netanyahu, of Lieberman bending on his, on his promises so, and finding some flexibility. So does that mean Israel is headed for a third election? What do you think? Well, I, I actually disagree with your characterization. It's true that, that this is a loss in terms of Netanyahu taking a step backwards in, in his position, but it's by no means a win for Gantz either. This is a stalemate. 
And th there's only really a couple of ways this can go. One is third election, as you say. The other is that they find out a way to form a unity government. And that fight is going to be who serves the first terms, right? right. Whether it's going to be Gantz or Netanyahu. But the time is not on Netanyahu's side because two weeks from now he is likely to be indicted. All right. Thank you so much. We're out of time for this segment. Thank you so much, Shai Franklin and Dovi Fyun.